Hello everyone. This is Dr. Mitesh Gala. Welcome to Rough Hook, a learning companion. Today in this video we are going to work about section and midpoint formula, a new topic, chapter 13, and we are going to try and finish 13A. Now what is section and midpoint formula? First let's get some understanding on it. Then the basic formula to apply it and then we'll get into the exercise. So if you go on to a graph paper and if you draw let's say a line ab with these as their coordinates all right let's say this line is getting intersected at y axis at this point let's say point n what is the ratio of am is to mn so if you can see one and two boxes here and one two and three boxes here so what's the ratio the ratio is 2 is to 3 that is called as section basically you are breaking ab into two sections first section am second section bm so that's what is called as section formula and midpoint will be the exact midpoint of ab now in this case we were able to identify it very easily why because the line was a horizontal line but if there is a line like this and some point over here how are you going to get the ratio of this it's going to be difficult to do it with your eyes in that case we have to use something called as section formula midpoint formula the ratio in which the point m divides ab is called m ratio n is called m ratio n the coordinates of x we can call it as x1 y1 and b we can call it as x2 y2 so basically you will see six components 1 2 3 4 5 6 and finally the point of m will be called as x y which is the main coordinates in this case the coordinates are 0 comma 2 so all together you will see eight components 2 4 6 8 out of these eight components six will be given to you the remaining two you will have to find that's the first thing you need to understand second thing very important if the point lies on x axis then it is called as x comma 0 we understood that in reflection and if the point lies on y axis we call it as 0 comma y so the moment they tell you that the point is lying on x axis indirectly they are giving you one component that is this zero if the point is lying on y axis they are giving you one component that is this zero that is the x axis x coordinate as zero did you get this so i just want you to remember two things for the time being number one that there are eight components and number two if the point lies on x axis it is x comma zero lying on y axis zero comma y the main thing that we are going to work upon is finding the coordinates of this point which is dividing ab into sections that is called as section formula so what is the section formula let's see so section formula says if you are looking at that coordinates of this point m basically this point that is 0 to by x and y so x is equal to m x to n x1 m plus n and y is equal to m y2 n y1 m plus n this is basically section formula so let's take this example we already know the answer as 0 2 let's find the 0 2 without the graphs okay so my x1 y1 is minus 2 2 x2 y2 is 3 2 that is your point a to b m is x y which we are trying to find and the ratio is 2 is to 3 that is m and n so the ratio is m and n remember that m n okay so we are trying to find this x which is this point m x y which we already know the answer as 0 2 we'll get this let's see how so m is 2 x2 is here see this is x2 x1 x2 let me use another ink so that it is easy for you to identify x1 y1 x2 y2 this is m and n and this is x and y which we are trying to find that is 0 and 2 so let's see how can we work it out now it will always go cross that means 2 will multiply this side and 3 will multiply on the other side can you see this cross because this is m into x2 all right x2 x2 is 3 n which is 3 into x1 x1 is minus 2 upon m plus n that is 2 plus 3 so i get 5 minus 5 upon 5 so did i manage to get 0 that's your first point now for the second one again m that is 2 into y2 that is 2 here n that is 
into y1 that is 2 upon 2 plus 3 that is m plus n that is 2 and 3 so 4 plus 6 upon 5 10 by 5 gives me 2 so x and y is my point m so what is x and y 0 comma 2 0 comma 2 was exactly the point that we that was breaking this into parts as 2 to 3 did you now understand exactly the application of section formula so in this chapter we are not going to use graphs at all we are going to use this major formula and we will try and find the components that are missing as i told you if you look at this one part you will see four components one x m n so three four and five x one y one correct so one two three four and five components here one two three four and five components here so altogether 10 components see 2 4 6 8 i got 8 components why 10 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so here i should have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 m and n is already there so 8 components out of 8 components 6 will be given to you the remaining 2 you will find let's hit it with the first sum i am 100 percent sure you will be able to tackle it now on your own you have been given the ratio a and B has been given. Find P. P is dividing this in the ratio 1 is to 2. So this you will call it as x1, y1, x2, y2 in your mind. You need not write this anywhere. Here you can say by section formula. So let's apply. First write the formula. X is m x2, n x1, m plus n. So x is what I am trying to find. m is 1. x2 is 5 n is 2 x1 is 1 upon 1 plus 2 did i write it correct 1 into 5 2 into 1 so 5 plus 2 7 by 3 okay likewise let's find y m y2 n y1 m plus n so m in this case is 1 y2 is 9 n is 2 y1 is 3 upon 1 plus 2 so i get 9 plus 6 15 15 by 3 so my answer should be 5 so therefore my point p becomes 7 by 3 comma 5 let us check i hope the first answer at least we should not get it wrong this is your exercise 13 a and we are trying to look at some number 1 part 1 so 13 a 1 part 1 it's correct good job did you get it now let's go for the next one some number 2 they say a lies on x axis so the moment they say x axis we will call this as x comma 0 and this is dividing in this ratio so basically your target is to find the ratio m ratio n is your question mark so you know the y coordinate of this so apply the y coordinate ka formula only whatever is known that formula you should apply so let's say y m y 2 n y 1 m plus n Come on, apply all the components, automatically you will get m ratio n. So y in this case, see this is x1, y1, this is x2, y2 and this is x and y. So y is 0, that is this is 0. Are you getting this? Now m I don't know, I need to find it. y2 is 6, n again I don't know, y1 is minus 3 upon m plus n again I don't know. If I cross multiply, it will become 0, 6m minus 3n 3n going on the other side becomes positive now be very careful i have seen people making mistakes over here even smart children m upon n people write 6 upon 3 3 is here only 6 is going down are you getting it so therefore m ratio n 1 ratio 2 because you can cancel always write it in the reduced format that is 1 is to 2 did you manage to get it what they can do in the second part is they will ask you to find the ratio and then later on they will ask you to find this x also so once you got the ratio substitute this in the x formula and automatically you will get the value of x also that's what exactly is your next question sum number three let's see who gets this b lies on y axis so y axis that means zero comma y now i know x so apply x mx2 nx1 m plus n x is 0 m is unknown x2 is minus 3 n is unknown x1 is 2 upon m plus n going on the other side becomes 0 3m goes on the other side 
2n so i will get m ratio n 2 stays here so 2 by 3 did you manage to get this part let's get the second part now uh, what is the question some number 3 says in what ratio they just want the ratio so therefore m ratio n is 2 ratio 3 nothing else did you get it what is easy yes it is now again the ratio they say this is dividing this way so you should always use a diagrammatic format minus 4 by 3 is the first extreme point 2 by 8 a is somewhere in the middle alright the question is in what ratio does it divide and then find a also so first apply y because y is known once you get the ratio then apply it in x and get the value of a also so let's see y my2 ny1 m plus n so y is 6 m is unknown because m ratio n we are trying to find so m into y2 y2 is 8 n into y1 that is 3 upon m plus n so cross multiply 6m 6n 8m 3n so m goes on the other side 2m n goes on the other side 3n so i easily get the answer as m ratio n m upon n so 3 stays there 2 goes down so 3 ratio 2 once i got this now apply for x and get the value of a also so m x 2 n x 1 m plus n use this m ratio n here come on stop the video try it x is a m is 3 x 2 x 2 is 2 n see go cross now okay see this is 3 ratio 2 so go cross this way and this way 3 with 2 and 2 with minus 4 upon m plus n which is 3 plus 2 so i'll get 6 4 twos are 8 so that will be minus 2 am i right 6 minus 8 minus 2 by 5 that should be the value of a let me check this because it looks a little weird so this is exercise 13 b and we are trying to look out for the answer of some number 5 it's correct minus 2 by 5 is absolutely right did you manage to get it now so two parts they will ask you one is the ratio and second get the answer also now what they will do is they will tell you a point is lying on so and so axis so you assume as 0 x or x y whatever so one is zero use that and get the other answer also so let's try some number seven in what ratio is this divided by y axis so let a 0 comma y lie on y axis and draw a diagram so you never go wrong minus 4 7 3 comma 0 divided by a which is 0 comma y so first get the ratio and then get the point of intersection matlab get y also so that's exactly what i was trying to tell you okay so let's begin by section formula please write that right now you may not but in the exam you are expected to okay so x is equal to mx2 nx1 upon m plus n ratio is unknown but x is 0 that's why we used it so mx2 x2 is 3 nx1 x1 is minus 4 upon m plus n goes on the other side so 0 3m minus 4n 4n comes on the other side m is here 3 is going down so m upon n 3 goes down so 4 upon 3 if you leave it here you've lost one mark because the question is ratio so write it in the ratio form that is 4 is to 3 got this now get me the second part that is y so y is equal to m y 2 n y 1 m plus n so now we've already got the ratio so write it here 4 is to 3 and go cross so 4 into y 2 y 2 is 0 3 into 7 upon m plus n m plus n is 4 plus 3 so i get this 0 7 3 is 21 4 plus 3 is 7 so my answer becomes 3 so therefore you can say that point a is basically 0 y so 0 comma 3 that's what your point a is that is point of intersection so two parts here first the ratio then the point of intersection you will see many more sums similar to this okay so let's pick up the next one everybody sum number 9 a b is divided by p so always diagrammatic representation will help you to understand the sum better so this is a and this is b divided by p such that pb is one part 
and AB is five parts. Now see, there is a catch over here. They have given you PB with AB. It had, it should have been PB with AP. Now how will you get AP? So we have a technique over here. We'll say PB be one x and AB be five x. So therefore, what will be AP? AP will be the full is five x and this is one x. So five x minus one x that is four x. Now that we've got AP as four x, I can say AP ratio PB. AP is four x, so four, and PB is one x, so one. So what does my ratio become? Four is to one. This is very important now. So we got the ratio four is to one. That is M N N. Now can you get me the coordinates of P? Is it simple now? Just apply section formula. So x m x two n x one m plus n. So m is four, and we are going cross. You need not do this every time. This is just for you to register right now. I'm doing. So four into minus two, n is one into minus three, upon four plus one. So minus eight minus three. So minus eleven by five is what I get. Weird. I don't know whether it's correct. Minus eight minus three. So minus eleven. Let's find y. So y m y two n y one m plus n. So m in this case four y two six n is one minus ten upon four plus one. So I get twenty four minus ten that is fourteen upon five. So these two answers. So therefore point P. Always write the final answer together. Otherwise you will lose one mark. Minus eleven by five and fourteen by five. How many of you all managed to get the same answer? Okay, that's good. So thirteen A, some number nine is correct. Good job. I was just checking it if you are correct or no. Some number eleven. Please read it. It's exactly the same sum. Pause the video. Go ahead. Don't cheat. I want to see how many of you all can manage. The only new thing is this. So let me give you the start. The ratio in which this is divided by line x is equal to two. So diagrammatic representation minus three minus one. 5 by 7 divided by a line which is x is equal to 2. Now, if the line is x is equal to 2, that means this point will have the x coordinate as 2, correct? Because it is going to go and hit at 2 only. This is unknown, so we'll call it as y. So you'll say let this point be m. So let m 2 comma y lie on x is equal to 2. Got this? Now that you got this x. Use this x, get the ratio. Once you get the ratio, then get y. That will help you to get your point of intersection. So first, use x ka formula. Come on, hit it. So x is m x two, n x one, m plus n. So x is two because this is x. M we don't know. X two is five. Again, n is not known, but x one is minus three. Upon m plus n, both are unknown. Cross multiply, I'll get two m. 2n, 5m, 3n. So 2 going on the other side, it makes 3m. 3 going on the other side, 5n. So m upon n, 3 going down. So m ratio n, 5 ratio 3. Many of you all might have got 3 ratio 5 because you do not transfer this properly. So please see to it that m, 3 goes down. Therefore, this is 5 is to 3. Once I got this five is to three, write it over here and cross it now. So y m y two n y one m plus n. So m is five y two seven three minus one five plus three. So thirty five minus three upon eight thirty two by eight gives me four, and therefore my point of intersection m is two. Comma four. Did you get this? Isn't it an interesting question? Slightly different by giving you this x is equal to two. So you have to think. So every time try and connect to the graph. When you connect to the graph, x is equal to two is this line. So any point on this anywhere has to be the x coordinate as two only. So that's the clue, and then you can begin. So use the graph in your mind, imagination always, so that you never go wrong. Next one. I want everyone to try some number thirteen. Thirteen is slightly different, but not difficult. A and B is what you have to find. 
diagrammatically can you see where is a line x axis so therefore what will a become x comma 0 and what will b become 0 comma y why because it is lying on y axis p is a point somewhere here on a b and it is dividing a b in the ratio 2 is to 5 now 90 percent children write 2 here and 5 here technically it is ulta to ratio 5 because this will come first then this if you read the entire question they further say that ap is smaller than bp that means the ratio will be smaller than this ratio so don't mess that up if you still confused draw a straight line name ab and p a is x comma 0 b is 0 comma y p is 5 comma minus 4 and the ratio is 2 is to 5 now you will not go wrong at all because ap is 2 already taken care of so rather than looking at this diagram getting confused better draw a straight line and now go about it do cross so if you use x you will take, take this as 0 you will get this x and if you use y ka formula take y as 0 you will get this basically this is your x and y don't get confused this is not x and y this is x1 y1 x2 y2 so let's apply it so x mx2 nx1 m plus n so what is my x x is 5 m 2 into 0 plus 5 into x upon 2 plus 5 so 7 5s are 35 equals to 5x so x is equal to 7 so we managed to get the first answer let's try to get the second answer m y2 n y1 m plus n now what is y y is minus 4 m m is 2 y2 y2 is y n which is 5 and y1 y1 is 0 upon m plus n so 2 plus 5 7 28 negative this becomes 0 2 y so y becomes from negative 14 that is my point now what are my points for a and b don't take a b as this two together a is x 0 x is 7 and 0 b 0 y so 0 and y is negative 14 now you manage to get the coordinates of a and b this is one of the typical question asked in the boards as well as school prelims with the diagram and people go wrong by taking this 2 and 5 that is this they take it ulta entire thing messes up did you get this great job let's go to the next one 16th 16th is a little technical sum put a star beside it you'll have to give me more attention so don't directly start first understand then i'll give you time to start you can go ahead okay there are two points this and this a is somewhere in the middle they say prove that a is a point of trisection trisection matlab this can be one and this can be two parts or it can be ulta also a can be here then this will be two parts and this will be one part because we don't know the position of a and b what is b b is another point of trisection trisection matlab taking this line and dividing into three parts if you want to divide a line in three parts you need two points if you want to divide in five parts you need four points one point less you will need so here dividing in three parts that is trisection you need two points can you see part one part two part three and all three parts will be equal so if you can find the ratio of let's call this p q ratio of pa is to aq as 1 is to 2 or 2 is to 1 whatever in that case a becomes the point of trisection so let's quickly find the ratio first then we will talk about this a little later so apply the formula x or y whichever you want one you can apply i am applying for x so i am taking x as 3 m is unknown x2 is 5 n is unknown x1 is 2 upon m plus n cross multiply 3m 3n 5m 2n 3 goes on the other side so 2m 2 comes here so only 1n so i get m upon n 2 going down so 1 by 2 so can you see as we predicted the ratio is 1 by 2 or it could have been 2 by 1 so you can say since ratio is 1 is to 2 therefore a is a point of trisection yeah since the ratio is 1 is to 2 obviously it is trisecting now you need to find the coordinates of b now if this is 1 is to 2 then our position is correct so what will be b b will be 2 is to 1 so let's find b so you will say therefore for point b 
PB ratio BQ will be 2 is to 1. So that's the new ratio that we found 2 is to 1. So let's find X first. So X will be M that is 2 into X2 1 into X1 that is 2 upon M plus N. So 7 sorry 10 plus 2 12 by 3 that should be 4. Let's find Y. Again M Y2 plus n y1 upon m plus n so minus 16 plus 1 minus 15 by 3 minus 5 so therefore point b if you leave your answer here you lose one mark because they have asked you b so write both of them together 4 comma minus 5 that's your point b how many managed to get this without my help entire sum genius guys if you got it on your own i am seriously impressed yeah the answer is correct good job Let's go with the next one. I want everyone to try sum number 18. 18 they say M and N is divided by Y axis at point L. So what will be the axis of L? Lying on Y axis. So you will say let L be 0 comma Y on Y axis. So what is the axis of? That's the first question. So axis of L is 0. Correct? You remember abscissa and ordinate. Abscissa is the x coordinate, ordinate is the y coordinate. So you get x coordinate as 0, that is abscissa. So the first answer we gave. Now the ratio. So this is 0, comma y. Since 0 is known, I can apply the uh, uh, section formula for x and get the answer of ratio. So mx2, nx1, m plus n. So x is 0, m is unknown x2 minus 3 again n unknown and this is 5 upon m plus n cross multiply is 0 so minus 3m plus 5n 3m going on the other side 5n so I get m upon n be very careful while transferring your 5 stays here 3 is going down so I get the ratio as 5 is to 3 now that we've got the ratio that's the second part go for the third part that is the y coordinate also you need to find so y will be m y 2 n y 1 m plus n so ratio is known 5 is to 3 cross it 5 with 2 and 3 with 7 correct 5 with 2 3 with 7 always cross it I have seen children multiplying 5 with 7 and 3 with 2 and messing up the entire sum so it's better you write there and from there cross it so you never go wrong this was taught to be my by one other student of mine a girl three years or four years back she said sir you cross it so you never go wrong that's how she remembered so I am using the same technique now m plus n 5 plus 3 so 10 plus 21 correct so becomes 31 upon 8 uh, let me recheck because it looks weird 5 into 2 3 into 7 so 10 and divided by 5 plus 3 so 10 plus 21 31 by 8 so therefore our point L becomes 0 comma 31 by 8 we'll have to check because it looks weird so just let me check quickly it's correct guys good job and the ratio also is correct let's go with the next one 19th 19th is again a good question. They say AP, PB are in the ratio 1 is to 2 and AQ, QC also 1 is to 2. ABC given. First find P then find Q using the ratios and everything. Okay. So for P we are finding first. Let's apply X. So X will be M. M is 1 is to 2. So 1 into X2 and 2 into X1. You got to be very careful. Huh? If you've swapped this, you had it. Your entire sum is gone. 1 is to 2. See, mentally I'm writing over here in my mind 1 is to 2. So 1 into minus 1, 2 into 2 and 1 plus 2. So I get minus 1 plus 4. So 3 by 3 gives me 1. Likewise, let's calculate for y. 1 into 2 and 2 into 5 upon 1 plus 2. So that will be 2 plus 10. 12 by 3 correct 2 plus 10 so should be 4 so therefore my point P becomes 1 comma 4 so we managed to get point P exactly the same way come on get me point Q You're not paused yet come on pause it get me for Q so right over here for Q X same logic 1 is to 2 so 1 into 5 
and 2 into 2 upon 1 plus 2 so 5 plus 4 9 by 3 gives me 3 likewise y 1 into 8 plus 2 into 5 upon 1 plus 2 so that will be 8 plus 10 18 by 3 6 so therefore my point Q is 3 comma 6 so we got P we got Q 3 comma 6 now this part is very interesting they want you to prove that PQ is one third of BC PQ is right over here this is one third of BC how are you going to do this standard 9 distance formula do you remember so you got to find the distance of PQ and BC so let's take a new sheet and let's first find distance PQ so distance PQ do you remember the formula x2 minus x1 square y2 minus y1 square under the root how many remembered this brilliant so let's find PQ first so 1 4 and 3 6 so x2 you can take anything as x2 doesn't matter so 3 minus 1 square and 6 minus 4 square under the root so this gives me 2 square 4 this gives me 2 square 4 under the root so becomes root 8 2 root 2 let's find distance BC these two same formula again so 5 plus 1 minus minus so plus 1 plus 8 minus 2 the whole square under the root so 6 square 36 8 minus 2 is again 36 so that gives me root 72 you'll have to find the factors that will be 6 root 2 once you find the factors now how to prove this the easiest method pq upon bc write the value of pq write the value of bc cancel and cross so therefore pq 1 bc goes on the other side and 3 goes on this side so therefore i can say bc oh why did i even do that therefore pq 1 by 3 and bc going on this side that's it pq 1 third bc so you have to use the distance formula find the distances they can definitely ask you anything from standard 9 this year in the boards one property from circle standard 9 was asked in standard 10 so you are expected to know all these okay i hope you got this by now yeah great let's go with the next one 19th was an interesting question because lots of things asked first pq ratio sorry not ratio the coordinates and then this distance formula okay let's go with the next one some number 23 uh you have to be very careful with this 23rd put a star besides it again a lovely question here they say p and q with whatever coordinates is divided by y axis at point r okay so y axis that means r becomes 0 comma y they first asking you the ratio then coordinates of r so that's very simple apply x and get the ratio apply y get the coordinates of r then we look at this area part in the end so first use your normal method so x mx2 nx1 m plus n so what is m unknown x is 0 x2 is going to be 3 and x1 is minus 4 this going on the other side so 0 4n coming here 3m so m stays here n goes down 3 goes down so i get the ratio m ratio n as 4 is to 3 did anyone get the same answer 4 is to 3 4 by 3 perfect now let's find for y so m y 2 n y 1 m plus n so the ratio is 4 into y 2 that is 2 3 into y 1 that is 5 upon 4 plus 3 so i get 8 plus 15 weird 8 plus 15 23 upon 7 we'll have to check is is r 0 23 by 7 it's correct so therefore point r is 0 by 23 upon 7 got this everybody yeah it was weird but it is correct now for the area they say pm is dropped perpendicular to x axis and qn also perpendicular to x axis now get me the area now if you look at the diagram okay let's uh, enlarge it slightly on a page so that we get some idea about it so i'm using this page i'm sorry but yeah just to make you understand p q n and this is your x axis this is point zero this is your y axis okay 
so p m q n this is minus 4 5 and this is 3 comma 2 this is the main clue main clue see how if this is minus 4 that means here it has to be minus 4 here it has to be 5 so minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 and here this is 3 by 2 so 1 2 and 3 correct that means can you find distance mn so here the distance is 4 and here the distance is 3 so the total distance mn becomes 7 are you getting this so we got this this is basically what shape it's a trapezium and area of a trapezium is equal to half sum of parallel sides into height s1 s2 into height mn is your height which you found how will you get these two sides now so if this is minus 4 and this is 5 that means this height also is 5 here this is 3 and this is 2 see 1 and 2 so here it has come to 2 that means this also is 2 that's your another height now all these things you need not mention you can directly use it so to get the area what are you going to do area of quadrilateral p m n q all right so before that you can say p m directly say it is 5 q n directly say it is 2 and m n equals to 7 you need not give any justification but you should know why these okay look at the diagram you will get it so area half into sum of parallel sides 5 plus 2 into height which is 7 so 7 7 is 49 ka half so that should be 24.5 square units don't write centimeter write units because we are not sure what it is 1 centimeter 2 centimeter better write units you are safe did you get this last part that was really interesting and different 24th simple question you will not need my help we've done this type before pause go ahead a lies on x axis so x comma 0 b lies on y axis 0 comma y so first only say a x comma 0 b 0 comma y ratio is given a p p b 1 is to 2 find the coordinates of a and b so first apply x mx2 nx1 m plus n so x see coordinates of p are minus 4 2 so x is minus 4 m is 1 x2 is 0 then 2 and x2 over here is just x and m plus n is not known no 1 plus 2 sorry it's known so 3 4s are minus 12 2x so x becomes minus 6 the moment I got x basically I got point a so I can say therefore point a minus 6 comma 0 very important sum because I have seen in many school prelims this one so it's better you take this seriously now y m y 2 n y 1 m plus n what is y y is 2 m 1 y2 is y 2 into 0 upon 1 plus 2 so 3 2 is a 6 equals to y directly got this so therefore point b which is 0 y becomes 0 6 if you forgotten to get this which i have seen people just come here and they stop on x and y they don't write a and b straight away one one mark lost for each so please see to it you are careful and you write it properly last question 26 i want you to try and then we will stop a uh, simple question but slightly different because a b and all that is given probably simultaneous we will use let's see ratio is given 3 is to 1 okay let's quickly apply your target is to find a b so m x 2 n x 1 m plus n so p x is minus b m is 3 x 2 is 5 n is 1 and x1 is minus 3 upon m plus n which is 3 plus 1 okay you won't need simultaneous here i don't think so because only one variable so i'll get minus b 15 minus 3 12 by 4 so b should be minus 3 according to me i hope we are correct let me just check so that we don't go wrong later yeah we are correct exactly same way find the other part it is simple it just looks dangerous these type of sums but they aren't at all y 9a minus 2 m is 3 y2 8a n is 1 y1 3a plus 1 
upon 3 plus 1. So that is 4 cross multiply. 4 into 9, 36a minus 8. 24a, 3a plus 1. So 36, 24, 3. 24 plus 3, 27. 27 coming here, so 9a. 1 plus 8, so 9. So my a becomes 1. They just asked you to find a and b. We found it. No need to go any further. Did you get this? I hope you enjoyed this exercise. Uh, the next time we will do the second exercise midpoint which is easier than this. And if you got that second exercise, you are through with the topic. Uh, homework, sum number 4, 6, 10, 15, 17, 22 and 25. Please see to it that you are honest with your homework at least. Because if you got this, you will get a good hand on your exercise. Bye guys, take care, stay safe and pray. Hope you had a lovely mathematics experience with a rough book. Our learning companion.